If you're coming from the world of Excel, I'm sure you would have done sum if and count if as the de facto analysis with your data in Excel. But if you're trying to do that in Power BI, there is no sum if or count if available and it's not as straightforward as it is in Excel. So in this video, I'm going to talk about that. How can you carry out Excel like sum if and count if in Power BI? Well, no further ado, let's go check it out. All right, folks, I'm working with this very simple data model right here. We have the sales table and that is connected on the many sides to the products table, which is on the one side. If you take a look at the relationship, the relationship is pretty straightforward between the product ID of the sales table and the product code of the products table. If you were to take a look at the sales table, the sales table looks pretty much like this. We have the date of the sale, the product ID, the number of units sold and the channel in which the product has been sold. Now, almost everything that you do in terms of a visualization in Power BI is nothing but some sort of count if and sum if. For instance, I wanna take a look at for every single channel, what was the number of units sold. So if I were to go back and create a simple table visual, in the table visual, I have dragged the channel from the sales table right here. And against that, I wanna take a look at, hey, if the channel is equals to affiliate, what is going to be my total units? And that is where I would be able to write a sum if. This is also a very pivot table like operation. And this is not at all difficult because just dragging the units of the sales table to your visual is going to carry out an operation like a sum if. And what we have received here is nothing but like a sum if. So against the affiliate, what have been the total units? So sum if the channel is affiliate, sum if the channel is organic, so on and so forth. The problem is not doing a sum if and the count if in the visuals, but the problem occurs when you have to do a count if or a sum if in a table of the data, which is where there are no visualizations. So for instance, if I were to go to my sales table and carry out a sum if column calculation right here, that is going to be quite unlike Excel. Now I'm not really contesting as to what is right and what is not because creating columns is not really the preferred way to go of creating calculations in Power BI. But in case you want to create a column for some whatever reason that you are trying to solve and column creation is important for you, which should behave like sum if or count if, this is the way to go. All right, let's just deal with our very first sum if like calculation. I would like to take a look at, hey, what's the total of the date? for the unit. So 2nd January is clearly repeated two times a year and so on and so forth. I just want to take a total of all the dates. So let's just sort the dates in the ascending order. And you can see that 2nd January is duplicated. 3rd January is also duplicated. I want to take the total of all the dates. So whatever number of units, so let's say six units right here, I want to write six and six and then seven units right here. I want to write seven and seven and that's nothing but like a summit. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new column right here. And in the column, I'll start to write something like a sum if. So I'm going to say something like date sum if. And let's just start to create a calculation. Now, when you're working with DAX, what we have to come up with is a filtered table. And the table should have two rows of data. Which two rows of data? The two rows that match your condition, which is nothing but the same date right here. And once you're able to have a table which has two rows of data, in that particular table, I can just sum ahead with these two numbers right here. So how do I make a table like that? First of all, let's just declare a variable. So I'm just gonna say var, and my current date, which is also going to be my filter condition, is going to be the current date of the current row, which is nothing but my sales table and date column right here. So now the current date variable stores this very current date right here. I'm going to say something like return and after the return statement, I'll say that, hey, I'm looking forward to filter my sales table and in the sales table, my condition is that my date column, which is right here, sales date column should match my um, current row date, which is nothing but my current date and that closes the bracket. Now, if you right now commit to this particular formula, this formula is going to give you an error because the filter function returns you a table and you don't really want a table. What you want is the sum of the two values. If you don't know the filter function, I'll suggest that you take a look at another video that I have done on the filter function, but hey, we'll continue from here on. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap the filter function inside of the sumx function, which also calls for another video that I have done on sumx. In case you don't know how to work with sumx, please take a look at that. Now, I'm saying that, hey, sumx function, please step inside this table, Presumably, this table has got now two rows of data, which is these two rows of data. And in this table, in this entire table, which has got two rows of data, I want you to go inside the units column and sum it up. 
and therefore I'm gonna write the units column right here and then close the bracket and press enter and that gives me the six that I was looking for and the seven that I was looking for. If you change the behavior of the calculation just a little bit you are going to get the count so if I were to just go ahead and copy that particular calculation and maybe just copy that once again and if I want to change the behavior to account here is what I'm going to do I'm going to comment that out and instead of doing a sum x I'm just going to count the number of rows there are in the table so I'll cancel the sum x I'll cancel all of this part and I'm just going to count the number of rows in the table that I have and that is going to be nothing but my count if like operation so I'm just going to say something like count rows count rows accepts a table filter delivers a table and that is pretty good to go I'm going to close the bracket press enter and that is nothing but two rows of data the two rows matched right here two rows matched right here one row matched right here three rows matched right here so on and so forth you get the idea now let's just level up from here and start to solve some ifs which is where we have multiple conditions not necessarily all of those conditions are going to come from the same table as the next set of a sum if and count if in fact sum if and count ifs that I'd like to do, I'd like to be able to count the number of rows or sum the number of units depending upon whatever calculation I'm doing for the current month for the band. Now I don't really want to do the calculation at the level of the date. I want to do the calculation at the level of the month of the year. That's my first condition. So all the rows which match the month of January, that's my first condition. And I don't really want to do the calculation at the level of the product, but the band of the product. If you were to take a look at the band real quick, if I just go to the products table and show you the band, our all the product listings have been divided into multiple bands. So these are free products, low end products, medium segment products and premium products. And I want to do a band level calculation. So here is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to see that what is the total number of units that were sold given two conditions the first condition is nothing but the month of Jan 11 and whatever month is right here and the band is a certain band let's say mid segment or premium or whatever that might be so how do we do such a calculation well what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new column right here and I'm going to do something like month and band sum if count if so let's just start to declare the first variable which is nothing but our current month so current month and the value of the current month is going to be extracted from this particular date which is where I will extract what is the month and what is the year of that month. So I'm going to use nothing but the format function to extract the month. So I'll say hey format the sales date which is right here and I'm going to say the format should be equal to mmm-yy that gives me the text of the year and the month in three letters and a two for the year. All right now let's just declare the second variable I'll say var. I do not have the band of the product in the current table so I'm going to use a VLOOKUP to get the band of the product from the products table. So I'm going to call this as current band which is going to be nothing but the VLOOKUP of the product band from the products table. Once I have laid down my two conditions which is nothing but the month and the year and the product band now I will start to create a filtered table which is only going to be filtering these two conditions and then I can iterate through that and do my sum if or count if or whatever that I am. So I'm going to say hey I'd like to return and what would I like to return? I'd like to return a table which is nothing but the filter function and I'd like to filter my sales table. In my sales table there are two conditions that I want to check for. The first condition is that the format of the current date so sales date sales date should be equal to uh, format uh, of the mmm yy should be equal to the current uh, month right here that's my condition number one and my second condition is nothing but the related band which is the vlookup of the band should be equal to let's say the current band so current band right these are my two condition now again the filter function is going to give you a table as an output not really a single value should you want to do a count if you can just wrap this around in the count rows function and that is going to be nothing but your count if that gives you the answer for count if and that's one answer that we have gotten right here but hey I want to do a sum if so I can just say sum x so go inside every single row of this table that we have created in every single row of the table you're going to find something like units and let's just total the units and then close the bracket and press enter and that is nothing but sum x 
for the year, for the month, and for the band. Here is also a quick check that we can do to test that our calculation is right or not by creating one more column, although I will not recommend to create columns, but hey, we are just learning right here. So I'm gonna right click here and make a new column. In the column, I'm gonna do a VLOOKUP for the band. So first of all, I'll just do a VLOOKUP for the band. That gets me the band. That's my condition number one. Second, I will just concatenate the month and the year. So I'll just say something like format. I want to format the sales date column right here in the, in the format of MMMYY and that's pretty good to go. Press enter and we have concatenated that. Now let's just filter for premium products in the month of January and let's just take a look at do we have the total 14 or not. So premium in the month of Jan 11, click on OK and we get the answer is 14. Well, that's the answer. So let's just test it out physically as well. So if I were to take a sum of these 4 plus 3, 7, 4 plus 3, 7, 7 and 7, 14 and that checks out the value right here. So far we have been working on the many side of the relationship which is nothing but my sales table right here. This is where we have been doing our sum if or count if or whatever that might be. There are times when you would want to do the sum if or count if especially on the one side of the relationship which is nothing but your products table. How do you do that? Let's just also take a look at that. So if I were to go to my products table and if I were to do like a sum if or a count if like thing, how do I do that? Note that the sum if and the count if data is going to come from the sales table which is where you have the duplicates because the products table is pretty much unique. You have unique products right here but I want to get the duplicates from the sales data, fetch it here and then do some sort of sum if or count if. Alright, the very first sum if or count if that I would like to is count the number of rows in the sales table that match this product and then this product and then this product so on and so forth. How do I do that? Right click here and make a new column. I'm going to call this as matching products and that is going to be my name of the column. Now let's just say that I want to get the sales table. So how do I get the matching sales table? If you take a look at this particular relationship that we have built, we have linked the product ID column. Let's just expand that a little bit. So we have linked the product code column right here to the product ID column right here. And that is the filter condition that I'd like to use. So I would like to say something like, hey, pick up this product ID, apply a filter for all the rows that match the product ID in this, get me the count of that. So how do I write that particular condition? So I'm going to say something like a function called related table. Related table function is the inverse of the VLOOKUP, which is nothing but related function. You typically write the related table function on the one side of the relationship to get the many side into your table. So I'm going to say that the related tables is nothing but the sales table, close the bracket. Related table function gives you a full table. So all the rows that match this particular product code are going to be stored inside of the related table and the related table is going to deliver you a full table with all the columns of the sales but matching number of rows. And you can't feed that in this column right here. So what do you do? You are just going to count the number of rows of this table. So count rows and close the bracket, press enter and that gives you the number 84. How do we know that is right? We can apply a physical filter and take a look at it. So that is FRSS. Let's just go to the sales table and remove all the filters from here and apply a filter FRSS. That's the product ID and we should have 84 rows in the data and that's what we have. So our answer is right. How do you do a sum if uh, with a similar condition? So I would like to take a sum of the number of units. There are 84 rows that matched but what's the total of the number of units? What you can do is something like right click make a new column and I'm going to say total units matching products, whatever name of the column. So total units is fine, but I'm going to say something like related table. Related table accepts a table, so which is nothing but my sales table. It delivers you a table, but hey, I just want to step inside every single row of this table and I want to calculate the units, which is nothing but the sales units column and then press enter. And those 84 rows give you the total of 222 units sold. All right, those were the examples of doing count if and sum if, especially when you're creating a column of the table, although not recommended. I've told you a couple of times now, but hey, in case you want to carry out, you know, such operations in smaller data sets to solve a very peculiar problem, here is a way that you can do Excel like sum if and count ifs in Power BI. 
Now there is another thing that I'd like to talk about before we go. Sometimes you would want to do a running count or a running sum or something like that. So if you take a look at this disconnected table that I have, this is just one isolated table of data that I have, which is where I have a people in Power Query. I have added this index column by uh, the add columns tab and index column. And that's the column that I have added. And I'd like to do a conditional count of the number of times the employee or the people is repeating. So let's just sort the data in the ascending order and I'll help you understand. You can see that Aiden is repeated twice. So in the first count, I'd like to write one. In the second count, I'd like to write two. And then Emily is again repeated twice. So one and then two. If the person is just coming one, for example, Ethan, that just goes as one, so on and so forth. How do I do a running conditional count? To be able to do that, we'll again build a table and write the logic something like this. So I'm just going to right click and make a new column. In the new column, I'm going to declare two variables. So there are two conditions that I have. The first condition is that Aiden should match. That's my first condition. And the second condition is that hey, uh, only do the count if the number is smaller than equal to the current number, which is nothing but the index. And that is the reason why we have used the index. So we're going to use these two conditions to build our formula. So I'm going to say something like a running count right here. And the running count will require us to declare two variables. The first one is nothing but the current person, which is going to be my people uh, in the data table. And then the second one is going to be my index which is going to be my index in the data. Now, once I have been able to declare these two variables, then I will start to create a table and the table will have certain number of rows based on the conditions that I have. So I'm going to say return and in the return statement, I'll again use the filter function. I'll want to filter through the table called data in the table data. I want to check for two conditions that the uh, index, which is uh, this row right here, should be less than equal to the current row, which we have captured as a variable on the top, should be less than or equal to index. That's my first condition, uh, I-N-D-E-X. I think we'll have to change the name of this. Uh, so call this as current index. So let's just call this as current index, all right? And my second condition is going to be that the person or the people should be equal to the current person right here. Now this filter function again is going to build a table, but hey, I don't really want a table. I just want to count the number of rows of the table. The filter function cannot really return a table in one single cell of the data. And therefore, I just want to count the number of rows of that. Now, if you take a look at the output, we have one and two for Aiden. The counting resets because Ava is the first unique person. Benjamin is the second unique person. Emily is again one and two, so on and so forth. And that actually gives me the running count. All right, that's been it. Those were a few examples of SUMIF and COUNTIF-like operations in Power BI. Just as the way that you do it in Excel, I tried to give you the logic and obviously you can extend the logic to your own scenarios. You just have to make a table with the conditions and then iterate through the table to carry out either a SUMIF or just count the number of rows of that table. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be glad to help. In the end, before you go, I'd like to give a big shout out about my courses on Power BI, especially DAX, Power Query, and the M language. In case you are struggling to learn Power BI in a structured way and you would want to master the fundamentals first, get really solid with the fundamentals and then solve more harder, more difficult problems, even from your own data, I'd highly recommend that you please take a look at my courses. Those are going to be super awesome. Thanks so much for sticking all around and I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Bye.